on our rights, uh, it'll be on the right side was becoming a commerce street. You know, in the 60s here in Dallas, at Field and Commerce is where all the action was, all the nightlife in town. So starting right here, going the way that we're going, this would be bar after bar, nightclub after nightclub. Jack Ruby's Old Carousel Club, the address, 1312 and a half Commerce Street. It was upstairs from a restaurant, right up here at the corner at Hackard and Commerce, right here at the entrance of this park is where it was. Folks, this was in the thick of it all. If you came downtown for Dallas Nightlife, you went right here to the Carousel Club. So now, folks, it's the next day. It's Saturday, November 24th at 10 a.m. It's time to transfer all this morning. Jack Ruby should already be at the Dallas City Jail. But Jack Ruby has not left his apartment yet. And he got a telephone call at 10.19 a.m. from a woman. Her name, Karen Little Lynn Carlin. It's one of his dancers. She is in Fort Worth. And she would like $25 to help pay her rent. Well, Jack Ruby's not going to drive all the way to Fort Worth to give her that money. He is going to wire her that money for Western Union. Well, folks, the Western Union was just a 90-second walk from the Dallas City Jail, which is coming up right up here. We're going to stop right at it. Western Union at 11 a.m. He's standing in line. He's waiting his turn. He's not in a hurry. And they know he was there at 11.17 a.m. because that's when the money gram was time stamped. He leaves the Western Union on foot, walking to the big building right up here on our left. But Ruby doesn't go into those front doors. He goes around to the side and he goes down the tunnel. Because, folks, that tunnel leads down to the basement with the transfer of all walls being done. And right here is where the armored car was sitting. And this looks exactly like it did that day 50 years ago. Now, there are more than 100 reporters on the other side of that door. Do you guys know why there's so many reporters? Folks, the transfer of Oswald is being broadcast on live television across the country and the world. Oswald is up on the third floor, coming down the elevator to that basement. And he's going to be in the open for just 10 seconds. That's it. By the time the elevator door is open up in the basement to the time he is in Captain Prince's Ford Galaxy. Now, would you guys agree that 10 seconds is a very small window of opportunity? Yeah, me too. Well, folks, we know Jack Ruby was where at 11.17 a.m. at the Western Union. It's a 90-second walk from here to there. Let's give Jack Ruby two minutes to get here. That's 11.19. Let's give him one more minute to get down that tunnel amongst the 100 plus reporters. That is 11.20. That's the exact same time that the elevator doors opened up for Oswald's 10 seconds. Perfect timing. Ruby sees him and he goes, Oswald, boom, and he fires. Oswald immediately collapses. Now the Dallas police are wrestling Jack Ruby to the ground. And when they do, he starts talking. You killed my president. I'm just doing what you guys couldn't do. I told you that I wasn't soft. And now they got to get Oswald to the hospital. And irony of all ironies, they take Oswald to the exact same hospital they took President Kennedy two days before the party. Folks, this was the first ever murder caught on live television. Anybody here see it live? Raise your hand if you did. Didn't that just blow your mind? Folks, Lee Harvey Oswald was 24 years old. He was shot and killed in cold blood by Jack Ruby right on the other side of that door. Jack Ruby stood trial for that crime here in Dallas and he was found guilty and he received the death sentence. His lawyers appealed that to the highest court in Texas, saying there's no way that Jack Ruby got a fair trial in Dallas. But before they could hear the appeal, Jack Ruby died of cancer three years later, January of 1967, in the old county jail and then Parkland Hospital. So folks, there's a lot of oddities these days in November, and some things really do make you scratch your head. So I'm going to ask you guys about one, and uh, this is the foundation of everything that we know. When President Kennedy was shot and killed here in Dallas, was that a Texas crime? Was it a federal crime? Or was it both? Folks, in 1963, 
there was no federal crime to shoot and kill the President of the United States. That law did not come about for two more years, and obviously it did from this day. So that makes it a Texas crime only, and here's why that's very important. Texas state law specifically states this. Any homicide committed in the state of Texas, the autopsy must be performed in the state of Texas. The President was declared dead at 1 p.m. Shortly after, the folks at Parkland are preparing to do the autopsy when the Secret Service of the United States come running in. And they said, hey, stop, we're going to take the president back to Washington. The medical examiner, Earl Rose, he said, no, you're not. We're going to do the autopsy right here. Folks, a scuffle and even a gun was pulled between the folks at Parkland and the Secret Service over this. But here's what the Secret Service know. All they know at this point is this. President Kennedy has been shot and killed. Governor Connolly has been shot. He, too, might die. They have to protect LBJ. They said, LBJ, you're getting on Air Force One, and we're getting out of Dallas right now. Let's go. Let's get out of here. But, folks, LBJ, he won't leave without Mrs. Kennedy. 